All right, so this is actually the first video. I made the others before this one. Uh, and this covers the basic idea of propositional logic. So we're going to look at why we use prop. Well, actually, we're just going to talk about propositional logic in general. Uh, and so propositional logic is the study of patterns and reasoning, right? And uh, it's actually the language, or at least the symbolic representation of the language of rational thought or logical constructs. So things like computer programs, the way computers work, uh, the way arguments work, the laws uh, of nations. All of these things can re be, for the most part, represented logically. And uh, so we can reduce terms, complex ideas, down to symbols. And those symbols are what we use uh, to, to get at, uh, at some kind of resolve or some kind of solution. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and erase this first part here. And let's see. So we'll get here and we'll erase that. Uh, let's go get our black background again. Oh, and we're going to make it a little darker. There we go. And so we're going to start off with a very basic one here. So what we got here uh, is your... Uh, is what we call a syllogism. So either John is here or Mary is here. Okay, so we have a premise here that either one of the two is here. And so then we have a statement that gives us a fact. It says that John is not here. Okay, so based on the first part, if John is not here, then we know that Mary is here. Okay, so this is this is these are the ideas of logic. That if you have kind of a rule or a premise, right, then everything after that we evaluate based on that rule so the fact that John is not here means that Mary is not here okay so we could reduce this down and we can make it into symbols instead of John we could use the letter J so we say John right oh let's get a color uh, we'll get green again so we'll say oh I'm still having trouble let me see if I can make this work we'll get it to work there we go. Let's go get green again. John, there we go. Okay, so so we say if John is here, right? And then we'll say John is here. Plus, yay, John is here. Uh, then Mary is not here, okay? So we'd say something like that implies then not Let's, let's use a little different not symbol. We can use this little symbol here. That means not. Then not Mary, right? And we'd actually say that not Mary is positive because that's kind of, that's holding the value that it's not Mary, okay? So if John, then not Mary. So if John is here, then we know that Mary's not here. All this gobbledygook here in the middle, that's what we're going to talk about over the course of uh, teaching and learning propositional logic like how do we t how do we represent these ideas and uh, and when we're done we'll be able to have very complex uh, well-constructed formulas that's what these are right well-formed formulas and we abbreviate those as WFF well-formed formulas those are formulas that obey all the rules uh, of syntax for logic and we also we say uh, instead of saying WFFs we just call them woofs like a dog says woof all right, so let's go over a couple basic things and we'll finish up here. Oh, let's get our black background again so we can see things a little easier. Ooh, green. No, we want black. So let's get black. There we go. All right, and get back our pen. Boy, I did so much better on the other videos that I did first, and now I'm pretending to do the first one and making all the mistakes I should have made when I was doing them first. So that's good, right? All right. So the first thing, in the language of symbolic logic, we have symbols and we have our value holders. Let me get a different thing there. So we have value holders. All right, and value holders are simply letters. So we can have things like A and B and Q and R and Z, right? We could have all the letters can be value holders. And all the value holders can hold values, okay? So I'm say values in orange. And we saw that on the first example, we had our values, right? We can have either the value of 
plus or the value of minus okay and then these symbols they can all be considered a well-formed formula the very simple one right there are value holders but the simplest woof uh, well actually we'll get to that in a second uh, the way we connect things is through logical operators logical operators are there's there's only four of them we have or and we think of or like a ditch actually there's five of them I think yeah uh, so or you can think of like a ditch right if we have a or B right they're on the other side of this ditch right so you either have to be on one side for a or you have to be on the other side for B you can also write or as a U symbol okay we also have the logical operator of and 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 is just a little dot okay and so if you know multiplication and you've seen it like you know I don't know in a couple of settings if you're just barely starting you usually use like an X for multiplication like 1 times 2 right but if you uh, if you look at other things or if you've worked with spreadsheets or anything like that you'll see like an asterisk or a little dot and that's how you'd write 1 times 2, 1 dot 2, okay? So and is either this little dot or a bullet. It's also a roof, okay? I like the roof because it's, you kind of think of like making a little house where A and B, well, that's kind of a bad B. There you go. A and B live under the same house. So they're and B, okay? Or you can do an upside down U, okay? Then we have the implication operator, and that's like the first example we, you know, we gave. The implication operator looks like a sideways U. And you can think of it like a magnet. If there were a bar here and you had your little hand and you were holding on to it, you could, you could stick on to things, right? So the implication operator, this, this one here, right? The way we read that is we read the, the first side. Let's say the P is here on the first side. Say if P then the other side T if P then T that's how you read the the operator in a woof we could say like a or B a and B if P then T okay uh, then we also have the equality operator which looks like an equal sign but it has an extra bar so it's three lines right and that just says the two things are equal so you can have like B and equals C right and then the last logical operator is kind of special. It's the not operator. Okay, and the not operator can either be this squiggly line. Some people call it a tilde. Uh, I think there's other names for it. Or you can make a straight little minus sign with a fang on it. Right? It's like the not monster. It's got this little fang. You can think about it. Right? So we can have that little fang. And those are the operators. The last thing we have are punctuation, and we only have two symbols for punctuation. We have the left parenthesis, and we have the right parenthesis. That's it. And we use that to separate things. Like we could say A and B, right? Or, like our little B, T. Okay? And that just tells us that this part is connected, and then this whole thing together is related to T. So those are our value holders, our letters, right? our values, plus and minus, our logical operators, and or implication equals and not, and our punctuation, just the two parentheses. And if you have these things all put together correctly, you have a well-formed formula. And that'll be the first, you have a very simple assignment to see if you can recognize a well-formed formula. Uh, there's only three rules for a well-formed formula, so let me go ahead and delete this, and we'll come back, and we'll do those three rules, and then we'll be done. So we have the first rule is uh, quite simple. Any letter can be uh, is a woof, right? So we could have the letter A. That's a woof. Okay, so that's a well-formed formula. Okay, any letter preceded by the not operator, like not B, right? Or we could write it not C. That is a woof. So we can say this is a well-formed formula. 
do, 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 right? And this is a well-formed formula. And then the last rule for a well-formed formula is that any two woofs connected by the other operators is a well-formed formula. So if you have an A and a B, right? Like this. This is this is terrible. This is not a well-formed formula. But you could say A and not B, like I guess you could you could put an and over here just to make it completely ridiculous. Uh, a and not B. That's a well-formed formula. Ooh, but that's not a very well-formed B. Anyway, you get the idea. If you have any questions, you can give me a you know you can drop me a line and we'll see if we can help you. Uh, the PDF, uh, we'll put it up. I'll just email it to you or put it up somewhere. All right. Good luck.